All right. Um, so I've been working on finding or identifying uh, personally identifiable information, PI, and Pixie. And I'm going to start off with some motivation. Uh, so as you know, uh, Pixie is a system that allows you to monitor your Kubernetes cluster. And as it does so, it gathers a lot of data, potentially sensitive data. Um, and increasingly, we've seen a rise of privacy legislation, uh, including in the EU, there's something called the General Data Protection Regulation, the GDPR. We've also seen similar le legislation in California. So users of Pixie are increasingly subject to these regulations um, and are having to change the way they uh, process and store sensitive data. Uh, and of course, there's a risk involved. Um, there are greater government fines now for data leaks, for exfiltration, for um, being more uh, careful about the way you process sensitive information. Uh, so given these restraints, ideally we want Pixie to be able to detect the flow of PI in our user's Kubernetes cluster and monitor if potential leaks are occurring, and thereby preventing uh, fines and legal battles. Um, but to do that, you need to be able to find PI. Um, so what is, current, what is Pixie currently able to do? Uh, well, Pixie can drop uh, all columns that may potentially contain sensitive information. Um, this is the brute force approach where you just drop it all and um, you may lose some potentially important information, uh, but you also drop the sensitive PI. Um, ideally, we'd want something more fine-grained than that. We want to be able to have row-based redaction. So for each data sample entry we have, we want to be able to redact specific PI types. Um, so Pixie currently has a UDF to do that, but it's limited to around eight PI types, and they're mostly rule-based. So things like credit cards, IMEI, that kind of thing. Um, so ideally, we want to expand the coverage. And how do we do that? Well, uh, why don't we just keep writing manual scripts? Um, uh, you know, this is how it's been done so far. Keep writing specific sort of PI uh, identification uh, scripts. Uh, well, I'd like to illustrate an issue with this uh, using an example. So here we have a sample JSON payload. Uh, it has some different fields, including names, identification documents, uh, passwords, addresses. So clearly here, we don't just have rule-based PII. We actually have names, things that can't easily be identified using something like a regex. It's not pattern-based. Uh, so this is where regex reaches sort of the end of the line, and we have to look at other approaches. Uh, and one thing we can do is we can try to use ML. Uh, by definition, ML is sort of a way to avoid us having to manually write scripts and manually implement rules. Um, but what does ML need? Well, ML needs a lot of data, um, a lot of labeled data specifically. Uh, and this, what's our problem here? Well, uh, we've got some sort of input data that's usually in text form, and we want to figure out whether it has PI or not. This is a binary classification problem. Um, so ideally, we'd want something that looks like this. We have a text input with some fields, some data. We have a binary label of whether it's sensitive or not, and we have the types. Um, so, unfortunately, uh, so unfortunately, what I found by uh, seeking out, while seeking out some uh, data sets of PI, it's very difficult to find open source data sets for broad PI categories because by definition it's sensitive. So unless it's a data leak, you won't find these things on the web very easily. Um, and so the solution I came up to this issue is to generate data synthetically. Um, so I built a tool that generates synthetic data uh, in a format that is similar to the data that Pixie collects from a cluster. Uh, so what does this look like? Well, um, Privy as a tool generates uh, data from API specifications. Uh, so there's an open directory of about 4,000 APIs, everything from Amazon to Stripe. And I look through those schemas and essentially match each of the parameters within them to specific PI and non-PI data providers. Uh, so this gives us a labeled data set. Um, and then these sort of API payloads are converted to specific protocol trace formats um, that Pixie collects. So say we have SQL, JSON, XML, HTML, all these sorts of protocol traces. Um, all right, 
so we have this synthetic data set. Um, a little bit more about how configurable this is. Uh, of course, you want the PI distribution to be a representative of the PI that might occur in a realistic data set. Uh, now, for ML classification tests, it is very convenient to have 50% of your records be one of the two labels that you're trying to train a model on, and the other half not be one of those two labels. Uh, so to do that, I have um, essentially configured Privy so that it inserts additional sensitive payloads into already sensitive payloads that the schema analyzer identified as being sensitive. And that equalizes the distribution. Uh, OK, so what's the use of this data set? Well, we use it to train ML models that identify PII and to test existing PII identification systems. And it's fairly large. It has um, draws from a lot of APIs, so it can generate over 100 million samples. OK, uh, a quick comparison to some existing data sets. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's very difficult to find PRI data sets on the web that aren't data leaks, especially labeled data sets. The closest uh, thing that I could find are named entity recognition data sets, uh, which are not PI necessarily, but they're sort of a similar ca category of uh, you know, locations, geopolitical entities, names, that kind of thing. Uh, and there are some hand labeled data sets uh, online. Um, either here we can see uh, there's one very common data set called uh, Connell, and that consists of a lot of sentences from news articles, from Reuters, uh, and those were hand labeled with certain named entities. There's another one that draws from Wikipedia, also has named entities. Uh, now, this is free text, so this is usually uh, not the kind of same format that uh, Pixie collects, because Pixie has these protocol traces that aren't necessarily uh, sentences in English that make sense. Um, so, this is just to illustrate that Privy generates data with more PI types than these existing data sets, um, is a lot larger, although it's not human labeled, it's machine labeled, um, and it has some different tr protocol traces than some other existing data sets. All right, uh, so now that we have a data set, uh, what do we do with it? Well, we train a model. Um, so what I've done is look at two approaches, two types of models to train that can identify PII and solve our binary classification problem. One is a recurrent neural network, um, LSTM. The other is BERT, which is the more state-of-the-art approach currently in natural language processing. Uh, the reason I went for an LSTM to begin with is because we have some existing tokenization code that makes integration with Pixie easier. It's also a much smaller model, meaning inference time is lower. Um, and I will demo this model a little bit later. Uh, now, the actual state-of-the-art BERT, ideally you'd want to take this underlying text representation that BERT has, then train on top of it using this new Privy data set, and then you have better performance. And I have some benchmarks at the end that I'll get back to. Um, OK, so now let's get to the fun part, uh, the demo. I'm going to open up the Pixie UI. And right now, I have SockShop running. Uh, so but, yes. So SockShop, common demo that we use at uh, at Pixie, uh, surprise, surprise, it's a sock shop. And um, I'm just going to demonstrate adding a record into sock shop, so registering a user, and then having the ML system classify this newly added record as PI or not PI. Um, so I'm going to click on register up here. And if somebody would like to suggest a name. All right, Ryan. Ryan. Yes. Um, your first name. Right. <laughs> Chang, and your email. All right, and your password. <laughs> Just say it out loud. <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so I'm going to register Ryan. Uh, nice. Okay, this I do have a video, so let me just. Um, around the video as a little backup. It could be that a duplicate key is an error here, but just to show you the sort of, I'll, set, I'll do another live demo in a second, but just to see, show you what it looks like to register live and then uh, run it in the UI. So in this case, I'm putting in some different names here um, than what Ryan just said. Um, going to skip a little bit. So I've registered this user. And then I go back to the Pixie UI. I have the script that filters 
So in this case, Ryan is there, but now I added a user called Smith. I filter the UI, and it gives me this uh, thing back, uh, this uh, response body. And at the end of it, there's a number prediction. The closer it is to 1, the more likely it is to be PI. OK, so that's all well and good. This is recording. I'm going to run the real time thing back here with this actual sock shop with already data that is running. As you can see, um, there are some records here, including some HTML. And you see the number classification down here. In this case, it was not super confident that it's PII. But if you choose a cutoff of 0 0.5, then it is. Well, let's see. This is some HTML. But it also has an author field here and the name. So this is sort of an edge case just to illustrate that it's not always clear whether this is PII or not. In this case, uh, the system thought it's probably PII, but not exactly sure. Let's look at another example here. Um, OK, we've got some like cat socks here. Uh, some image URLs doesn't seem like it's sensitive, and indeed the bottle said that it's definitely not sensitive. Um, so I also have just to you know keep scrolling down. You can see some different examples here. I have another demo running that um, essentially samples from the test set that Privy generated. So the model was not trained on these samples, but it was generated by Privy, um, and this is just to show a greater variety of JSON payloads that could come in and that the system could classify. So here, if we look at some examples, uh, OK, well, uh, let's click on like a random one here. We've got a response body with some text. Uh, it looks like random things. doesn't look like PII. Let's find a PII example. Um, this one seems to be one. Uh, I think it thought that Whitney and Ferguson uh, is likely a name of sorts or an organization name. Oh, DBA, I guess that's an acronym for doing business as. So this is probably an organization. OK, uh, so that's the demo. You can also test it out a little bit more later. Um, let's get to some quick benchmarks here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's sort of the state of the art approach, which is BERT, uh, which the demo does not currently use. But the state of the art approach usually is better, but it's a, lot more, uh, a much larger model. Uh, so what did I do here? Well, I've got a test set. Uh, that uh, each of these models uh, was not trained on, but it was generated by Privy. And I needed something to compare this to. Um, and the closest thing I found was a BERT model trained for named entity recognition. Um, and so named entity recognition has these sort of four uh, main types, like tagging location names and people's names, geopolitical entities. So I filtered this data set only to those PI categories so that I can have a more fair comparison. And then I have this one model that was trained um, sort of on top of previous data set, and this other model that was trained on um, a different named entity recognition set with the same PII types. And we can see there's an, import, uh, there's an accuracy improvement on this test set. Um, happy to talk more about this and how the benchmarks were set up, uh, if there are any questions. Um, what about future work? Well, uh, of course, you can keep extending the data set. Uh, you can use some unsupervised learning techniques to label this data set. Uh, you, could even, um, you could even use the model to add labels to new data samples, and then add that to the data set, retrain the model, make it a little bit better each time. Um, another thing you can do is keep extending the data providers that Privy currently generates. So more PI types, currently around 60 are supported. Um, so um, you could also add more language support. Currently, English and German are supported. I did German mostly as a proof of concept, just because I know German. Uh, and you could also try out some different pre-trained models, which essentially means using an existing model online, using it as a baseline, and then training on top of it, so using its underlying text representation. All right, um, that's all from me. Uh, if there are any questions, happy to answer those. Is there any existing open source uh, projects doing similar thing? Yes. So there's a project called Presidio by Microsoft, which um, does a similar sort of thing, but not for protocol traces. They allow you, um, so they benchmark some PI identification systems on free text, and you have to label your own data set. So it's, they probably have an internal data set that's labeled, but that, that's, that's not accessible open source. So I looked at that. Um, and that's where I got some of the uh, sort of other models that I, I tested and played around with and BERT state of the art.
Maybe the next thought to, so you give the prediction for the entire payload. Mm -hmm. Have you given any thought to like how you might identify the actual piece within there? Yeah, yeah, that? definitely. So that's multi-label classification. Uh, and usually it's more difficult to do multi-label classification, uh, right? There are more categories, more chances for the model to get confused. In this case, it was mostly a time constraint that um, I didn't try out the classification. Privy actually generates labeled data uh, and tells you what specific PI types are in the requests and also what categories they're associated with. So this is an extension as well uh, to do multi-label classification. You can, you can probably even predict the position of the PI information, right? Like where it started and where it ends. Definitely. I think that would require some changes about how the labels are generated just to give the specific like token offsets um, into the, the string. Um, but I think it would be a fairly minor change to the way the data is labeled within Privy. So probably before the data that they use to train the model, mm -hmm. do you use the entire payload or like specific like field, like name, blah, 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 like data per, blah, blah, blah? So currently I use the entire payload, but I add transformations on top of it. So to make sure that the model doesn't hone in on like a bracket or some specific um, tokens that aren't relevant to PI, I gen Privy generates variations of the same payload with certain tokens removed. Um, so uh, you're right in saying currently it's trained on the entire payload, including the name of the parameter and the value. So what's relevant often is in these sort of payloads is that you might have a sensitive parameter name and a sensitive value, or you might not have like a sensitive parameter name but a sensitive value. Uh, so both of those things are relevant. So if you have like, well, yeah, because I saw in your training data that the generated name, for example, can be just a bunch of symbols, right? Is that like, I guess, sensitive in a way? Or? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Like, like in the generated data that you showed, I think one of the fields was just a bunch of like characters, like, uh, maybe that's something I noticed, but like name, I see, choose, blah, blah. That seems like random string. Yeah, so sometimes for the non-PI, I needed, so for certain parameters that have non-PI data, I, need, I still need to find a way to generate that data. And the way I do it is I have custom string generation um, methods that generate some sort of random combination of words and uh, hexadecimal, not hexadecimals, um, uh, sort of letters and numbers, and then combine them. So if your question is about the, uh, where this sort of garbage comes from, it's, for the, it's generated by data providers uh, for non-PI payment. I guess my question is more, so is it important the value of that the specific parameter, or is it important that the parameter is like name? I see. So you're asking about how it's labeled in the first place when it's generated? Um, so the labeling happens like this. If we go back to the privy diagram. Um, so over here, we have the schema parser. And the API specs are given by a, a format called OpenAPI3. And that tells you a lot about each of the parameters, what types they might have, what, you know, sometimes there's even an enum for like the specific values they take on. And what privy does is it looks through the, you know, the description, the enums and all that, and finds sensitive PI keywords. So it has like a word bank of PI keywords, and if it finds that, then it labels this as sensitive and it matches a sensitive data provider, like the appropriate one. So if it's like um, you know, a first name, then it matches to a first name data provider. And that's how the value is generated and how it's labeled. 